Hi, in uh, this video I'll be talking about looking at point patterns. We're not going to do any inferential statistics, we're not going to test if the pat pattern is in this or that way, but we're going to see how we can visualize point patterns, which tools ArcMap gives us for this. The first tool I'll mention, I've mentioned in a video about distance, namely our density tools. Um, and here especially our kernel density tool is a good tool to visualize patterns. The reason why I prefer using the kernel density rather than the point density is that if you can see in this example here we have that the dots are gold finds on the island of Bonhon. And here we have the highest density of gold finds somewhere there where there's no finds at all. Simply because this is the area where there are most gold finds in the specific search radius. Because we have both have some finds here and the finds up here. So while point density does say how many observations are there in the search radio. It does not pinpoint where we have the highest density. There we need to use the kernel density. So the kernel density is a good way of, if you wish, uh, extracting where do we have the most observations. For to work with this, I'll be working with the same data set that we've been used in our videos on working with attribute data. So we here have our firms in the municipalities of Copenhagen and Frederiksberg. And I've now filtered out my data set so I only have firms working with um, baby equipment, so things and odds and prams and whatever you need for babies. And we then have um, shops for gold and watches. And we have green grocers. These are the three types of shops that we have, and these are the locations of them within the municipalities of Copenhagen and Frederiksberg. And the question is, what can we say about the pattern here? Well, in my look at this, there is a concentration of gold watch shops here, and in my look, is there some concentration of green grocers there and some baby equipment shops um, relatively distributed across everything. Uh, but it can be difficult because is that just because this yellow collar I've assigned to the goldsmiths uh, is that just shining out more or is there more of them in this area? And that's where our density tool comes into play. When we start doing this type of analysis, we have to remember that by default, the output of any analysis in ArcMap has the same spatial extent as the input. So if we want to compare different data sets, we have a problem because then the output will become differently if they do not have exactly the sp same spatial uh, Extent and you can see there's no green grocers down here at the southern end here, so they will have a completely different spatial extent the output doing analysis of the green grocers. So the first thing we have to do in this type of data set is that we have to specify our output as being something global for all our data sets. We can do that in the geoprocessing menu by setting our environment, our processing extent, and then simply set it to the display. Same as display. Now whatever we do, our output, the area that will be processed is not just what's covered by data, but is the same as my display as I see it now. So that's the first thing to do. Then we will start doing a uh, model for our tools and to uh, help us out I have already made a bit of the model here. Um, and what we see here is a standard model. I'll just delete that one for a moment here and we can talk about what that was. So here what we do is that we do a select layer by attribute. So not, it's not the selection tool 
and it's a select layer so it's the one that creates a selection set so the one the blue ones or whatever and um, that I'm using that because it's much faster than creating a um, selection set uh, sorry using select tool that generates a output file and also for many of the tools that we'll be using spatial statistics we do not want to have our different types of firms split out in individual files we will rather have them in one file um, where they are together so that's um, our tool so we'll do a selection of create a new selection where we select all of those that sell baby equipment and then we'll do a selection where we have all of those that are green grocers and then we have all of those that sell gold and watches and so on these are then our selection sets and one of those we'll do a kernel uh, density and we can simply set our parameters our output cell size uh, and our search ranges in this case I would like to ensure that my search ranges is the same for all of them and the way I do this is that I right click on a layer and go up and say create variable from parameter and do search ranges that creates a new attribute called search ranges and in this I have the value of 500 the idea of this is that I can connect, connect this attribute into my other tools search ranges and to search ranges so if I want to run my model with search ranges of let's say 400 meters I can simply just change it one place like that and then all of my tools will be running a search ranges of 400 meters because they are all using it from up here so the advantage of creating a variable so you right click on a layer and say make variable from parameter is that you then can share that variable in a series of tools where you need to ensure that you have specified the same value so in this case and I do want it back to 500 meters so I can just edit this one say 500 meters so my tool is ready to run I just uh, ensure that it runs the entire model and I am uh, ready to run it now so you can see it does the selection set changes the selection set and does a new, a new density calculation so if we go back to our table of contents we now have I can minimize our model and I can uh, clear out my selection set so we ha now have a series of densities we have a density for green grocers so we have obviously our burger here and our burger we have our baby shop density which has a higher density in the center of Copenhagen and in the part of Copenhagen called Ustelbrook and if you look at our gold and watch it has a large density in the center of Copenhagen not, and not so many some out of Nürburgring but not the key element to gold and watches is in the center of Copenhagen so that is using our uh, kernel tool to create a map if you now want to do a map where we can see them together well at basically just go to your layout and then take our data set make sure it's zoomed to everything like that and then you can copy that data frame so now we have an exactly the same size exact same area data set here I like align them and change which one is at the top so now I've got this new data set 
and instead of showing my goldsmith I can show my map of my baby shops and I can then take the same data set and paste it again and place it somewhere like that and uh, again there go down into the new data frame I created the data frame that's active is the one that is in bold here so I'll say okay now I want not to look at goldsmiths but I want to look at greengrocers so now I have a layout of the kernel density of all of our different um, types of shops I now um, create a new last copy of it because I'll just be using that in a moment so I'll just stop that down there and of course you can in ArcMap you can do things like ensuring that let's say I want this one and this one to be aligned I right click on them and I can go and say align to their center on that, like that I think want to do that I want to align it to the center on my that axis sorry so I got that there and I can do the same with these and align them to the center of that axis there so I can then make my layout look a bit more neat I have this one is now my active window I'll show that and I'll back, go back to the data view if I want to look a bit more closely on the data set I this ArcMap has a series of tools the distributional or directional distribution and the mean center they are the, probably the most too commonly used and what we do to activate these tools is that we go down where we were before in our tool set for doing spatial analysis so these tools down here and here we have a set for mapping uh, patterns that we have yeah, distribution we have central feature mean and so on so the distributional one here that will give it a data set we'll just give it our firms give it output give it one standard deviation so that's we have 66% um, of our population inside there so a bit more than half of our firms should be inside our unit here so we'll create a centered polygon improving 66% are uh, inside it which weighted field if you have a field that specifies that they're not only green grocers but they had let's say um, how much is the revenue or how many employees or whatever do we have that we can weight them with this and then it has a case field so case field just like in the summary statistics is a grouping and a, uh, attribute so which one do we need to group on and it's this one that's the text for them so we're ready to run our tool and we now get some ellipses and if we go in and change our colors for the ellipses uh, not like that but so we're going to change them to and our text and we can then say that our baby shops they should have a fill of none and a border of the baby shop color maybe a bit thicker and our goldsmith should have a fill of none a border of and a color of yellow and our green grocers should have a fill of none and a border width of two and a color green that's what we're using for our green grocers so we now can see how these distributions encapsulate the center of our firms we want to know where the center of our ellipses or the center of our 
firms is. So red, what red is the center of red of our goldsmiths. We will need to know, or we can use this tool that we call our center values here. Now two values, there's a mean and a median. We commonly prefer to use the median because the mean is rather sensitive to outliers. Um, so we have some isolated observations right out here and they will have quite a lot of influence on our data set if we use the mean value. So typically we prefer to use the median because it's less sensitive to this. So use the median, uh, drag in our firm data set, set our case field to be our type of firms. Again there we do not have any weight fields, we don't need any attributes, so we say OK. It will run the tool and we can now go and look at our data set here with these yellow, three yellow dots. We want to change that display, so we just change them to our firm types here. And again there we might change our baby shops to be the same nice color. And this time we'll probably make them even bigger. But leave the ring of the outline on them. And our goldsmiths. Our yellow color. Or we could choose something else than a circle to make it a bit more obvious that it's in our data set. And our green grocers. So, now we've got our three points, so we can see that the center of our green grocers is in this area here. The center of our, sorry, the center of the goldsmiths is here. The center of our baby shops here, and the center of the green grocers is a bit more north of that. And of course, we can now have this on our final map layout, so we can now print a layout with all the information in it, where we can see our densities and the distribution as it has been described by our directional distribution these where we have our 66 percent of the population inside or we have our um, center points here so that's the standard tools for doing visualizations in arc map of point patterns